So I figured it was time to squeeze a little bit more performance out of my video editing machine here. Um, this machine usually gets the hand-me-downs from my main gaming system. So when I upgrade that one, those parts go into this one. Um, right now I'm running a Xeon uh, X3220 uh, quad-core processor overclocked to about 3.4, I think, something like that. Um, this is running a Mountain Lion OS, and uh, I decided that uh, I'd like to push a little bit more performance out of this if I possibly can. This is a Socket 775 system, and I wanted to upgrade the processor to one of these. Uh, E5430 2.66 processor with 12 meg of cache. Uh, this processor is for a 771. Uh, what's interesting about the 771s is that they are identical to a 775 except that they have reversed two of the pins on the processor. Another wonderful trick that Intel likes to play on people. So we're going to pop this in the system and see if this Asus motherboard likes this or not. Um, problem with this is that with this uh, cooler, which I love this cooler by the way, um, it unfortunately requires me to pull the motherboard out in order to remove the cooler. The case unfortunately does not have a panel on the back side for me to remove the heat sink that way. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this processor and heat sink and motherboard and all that fun stuff and put the processor in and put it back together and we'll see if we got any kind of speed improvement and maybe some better overclocking. Okay, so I have the new processor fitted into the socket here. Okay, so I've got the uh, motherboard out of the computer here, and I'm going to show you what you have to do to these to make this modification work. Um, the LGA 771 chip will not fit into that socket without modifying the socket. So as you can see, see, let's get the uh, arrows oriented there. Your notches are in different places. The Xeon is up here. The 771 is up here. The 775 is over here. You want to keep these oriented the same way when you're putting the new chip into the socket with that little arrow right there, which is present on the 771. So what you have to do is you have to modify the socket now. This is extreme risk and you could damage your socket if you are not careful. But what you want to have is you want to have a good sharp knife blade. A hobby knife, a utility knife, something but I would suggest that it's brand new out of the package because it really sucks trying to push through plastic with a with a dull blade. So let's see, let's get this oriented right. So the tabs were here and here. So I just cut through those and pulled the plastic out. Now the way that I did that to get the plastic out was I took this knife blade and just wetted it with my tongue which made it sticky and then I was able to pull grab a hold of that plastic piece and pull it out of there without um, damaging the pins or touching the pins there so that worked out pretty good just like so and as you can see it fits in there perfectly so now we'll just put the latch down and we're good to go now we'll go ahead and put some new thermal compound on this processor. Just paint that on. Alright, we're going to put the heat sink back on and we'll put this in the system and we will cross our fingers that it's going to work. Okay, so it seems like more often than not, um, things that you try to do like this don't always work out the first try. Um, I couldn't get my Asus P5e board to turn on with the processor installed. It turned on, then shut off, and turns back on, and never displays anything on the screen. So after looking around in the message boards and updating my BIOS and still not having any luck with it, I'm thinking, well, maybe I've got a problem with the processor. So I took a look at the adapter that's stuck to the processor and it seemed to be fine. So I said, hmm, well I've got another Socket 775 motherboard, just a generic Intel desktop board, nothing fancy, and what do you know? It recognizes it. And it recognizes the two caches, indicating it is recognizing it as a quad-core processor. Without any modifications, the generic Intel desktop motherboard 
works with this modification. And I would have thought that of all manufacturers, the Intel desktop boards would not work with this modification, but it does. So I find that kind of funny. So now I'm going to have to figure out if this is even possible with that X38 board. Now one guy had the same problem on a, another ASUS board and he said his sticker was bad, which is what made me think mine was bad because his was behaving the same way. Um, a lot of people say that you have to add the Xeon microcode string to the BIOS, uh, but uh, some people indicate that's not necessarily the case for it to get, be able to turn on. It just gives you the error. BIOS uh, micro, uh, microprocessor code needs to be updated error, but it still turns on. But I'm not even getting that far with the ASUS board. And I know it's still good because I plugged in my old processor and it worked just fine. So I don't know what's going on here, but um, having the right motherboard is apparently a bigger issue than I originally thought with this. Okay, so I have decided to try a BIOS hack here. Uh, just finished flashing it with the Rampage Maximus BIOS that someone posted on the YouTube video on how to upgrade the BIOS. So we'll see if that fixes my problem. I hope I didn't just brick my motherboard. We will see. Oh yeah. Alright, so let's go ahead and see if this Xeon processor will work now. Well, still no go. I guess I'm going to have to try and find a hacked BIOS that has some microcode updates on it. Maybe I can find someone to program that. I wanted to make a quick note about this. This is something that helps me in overclocking. You know, a lot of people uh, say, well, you don't need this, this RAM that lights up. Um, if you notice that uh, since the motherboard's not happy with this processor, the memory is not lit up and not activated. Um, this is, for me, a good diagnostic thing because I know instantly that it's not going to work because the, the access lights up here come on virtually instantly if the, if the motherboard is happy. This also helps me too with overclocking because uh, if, if my settings aren't right, then I can see, for example, if there's uh, a stick of memory that doesn't like the overclock, then that stick of memory will not light up, but the other ones will. Or if it's really extreme, and none of them will light up, or maybe if the system locks up, for example, the lights will, will stay solid. So, um, you know, it, it does help me, at least for overclocking, um, because sometimes when you're tweaking your memory settings and stuff like that, um, you'll know right away if the, mem if the memory liked it or not. So that, that's why I like to use it if I can. So the verdict is, it's up and running. Unfortunately, the ASUS has defeated the Wayback Tech. Give me a swift knockdown blow, folks. Unfortunately, the X38 chipset, apparently, no matter if you add the microcode or not that you need, does not work with this processor. I believe that there is something that ASUS did to the X38 and the X48 based motherboards, which are virtually identical boards that probably didn't follow Intel specification for the socket or the specifications for the socket changed when Intel did the G and the P series uh, chipsets which both apparently have pretty good success at running so I'm still back to where I was however I have a little bit better BIOS which so far really hasn't done me any good so maybe they'll be around too but so far no go oh well I guess it was worth a shot just for note, the uh, Gigabyte boards apparently are the best ones to go with for this type of mod. Uh, and as you saw, that generic G41 Intel based motherboard also uh, worked right out of the box with that processor. So I guess that's about it for old Big Blue here. Take care, everyone.